my name is Caroline Sanchez. I'm a marine biologist at SPC since 2004. I've been studying marine biology at the University of James Cook in Australia and I've been identifying prey for our Pacific marine specimen bank, but also developing trainings for observers to collect samples at sea and in port. I've been collecting samples, more than thousands of samples so far since 2004 for our Pacific Marine Specimen Bank, and I'm here today to share with you my knowledge and my experience. Today, we're going to learn how to extract the otolites from a mahimai. Here, we're going to need a saw, tweezers, a vial, a label, a knife, and gloves. Afterwards, to fully extract the otolites, we will need a microscope, a needle, and soft tweezers. My Mai otolith extractions are extremely complex and difficult. I think it's one of the most difficult otoliths I've ever collected on site. The first thing you need to check is if you are extracting the otoliths from a male or a female Mai Mai. The shape of the head is different. It is more difficult to cut the top of the head of the male than a female. The male head is much larger and stronger. So you have to be more patient while you are cutting through. The easiest way to extract the otoliths is after the head has been removed from the rest of the body. The technique that I know and I'm going to show you is cutting the top of the head of the fish to access the brain cavity. First, you need to stabilize the head on the table. What I do is I use my tweezers to trace a line on where I'm going to use the saw to cut the top of the head. I will try my best to follow that line. If you see, the line is just above the eye. Sometimes the cut might not be deep enough, but it is better to do it like that. Because if you cut too deep, you will miss the otolites. After the cut, I move the head to face towards me because it will be a while before you find the otolites. If you have a headlight, even better because sometimes the natural light is not enough for you to see the otolites. If there is some filament, remove it slowly. Don't do this too quickly because you might pull out the otolite spaghetti. The otolite is so small that it could go with the whole spaghetti. If you're not sure if you have found the otolites or not, try to pull everything you can, because you will find it afterwards under the microscope. As with other spaces, there are two otolites. If you find one, it's already a good win. If you can, do it. However, I don't recommend to remove the otolites from the membrane, because the otolites are shaped like a very small butterfly and can break very easily. When you manage to remove the spaghetti only, place the whole thing inside the vial. If you have the otolites, don't remove the membrane. I would suggest using a microscope in the lab afterwards to carefully remove the otolites from its membrane. Cut your cable to collect the label. Remember, you can also use a plastic label from the cable if you still have some labels available on the cable. Place the label inside the vial and close it making sure it is tightly sealed. You don't need to put any water inside the vial. On board a fishing vessel, if you extract the otolites with its membrane or the whole spaghetti, place them with the other samples in the freezer. In the lab, to remove the otolites from its membrane, you need soft tweezers, thin and pointy tweezers, a needle, a petri box, a pipette with water, and a microscope. I prepare the setting of my microscope. I remove the OT canal or the otolites from the vial using the pressure of the water created by the pipette. I drop it inside the petri box. As you can see, during my extraction, I have found the otolites and I don't need to search for them within the canal under the microscope. Sometimes you need to spend some time to find the otolites. We need to be very careful when we're going to remove the otolite because I could break it at this time. 
I can push the auto lid with a needle. I use the pointy tweezers to hold the membrane and the small needle to break the membrane. We need to be very careful when we're going to remove the auto lid because I could break it at this time. I can push the auto lid with a needle. I'm using a very soft tweezers to grab the auto lids and I place the auto lids inside the vial very carefully. When you finish placing the auto lids, don't forget to add the label inside the vial. Use a soft label not to damage the auto lids inside the vial. Close the vial, making sure it is tightly sealed. That's it for today. You can check the other videos for the Pacific Marine Specimen Bank Sampling Project. Thank you.